Folks, welcome back to the channel. As always, really great to see you. Thank you for being here. Today, we're going to go on a gallery tour together, you and I, out to Chelsea, particularly the Pace Gallery, which has on some pretty beautiful, seminal, pivotal works by some artists that you may recognize and some that you may not. Happy to introduce you to their work. Uh, in the meantime, if you have not already considered subscribing to the channel, please do so. It does help me get more attention to the channel. And in turn, you get alerts when videos are posted like these. So together, let's go on this journey of exploring art in New York City and beyond. So without further ado, let's head to the Pace Galleries. As is customary on beautiful days in New York City, I will always ride my bike to the gallery. This first artist you're about to see, I get excited about her work. Anytime I see it, I feel like there's something so deliciously tactile about her work. The colors, the sheen, the, the touch of it. it. It basically begs you to touch the work, but we don't touch the work because it's their work. It's on display. I don't want to wreck anything, but their work just draws you in to touch it. I'm talking about none other than the legendary Linda Bangless. Linda is one of the premier post-minimalist artists. So what does that mean? Minimalist art is very much bare bones. It's the reducing of art to its most fundamental elements, simple shapes, simple lines, simple forms. Linda's works on view right now at the Pace Gallery are nothing short of super sensuous. They are deliciously metallic and shiny and it makes me want to just rub my face across these things they look so soft and so smooth and cold to the touch or are they warm to the touch i don't know i want to get in close and find out but again i digress we don't touch the work respect these forms of sculptures are swooping curling wrapping twisting contorting they look very gestural as if they were done fluidly with one hand they're almost very liquid like in their fluidity of motion your eye is drawn in all these directions that follow a linear path but it curls and it wraps it's very circular and swoopy but these are obviously cast bronze this is bronze poured into a mold the, it, I mean, just, it is incredible to me how fluid and liquid they seem to be, and yet they're immensely dense and heavy, but somehow visibly ethereal and light to the eye. That, that contradiction of weight visibly and physically is something I'm very drawn to. I could have walked around that space for a long, long time, just taking it in. Every angle you're at the sculpture, it takes on a new life, a new image, a new idea, a new feeling. I was really drawn to these works, not just because they're shiny, but because they represent a, a real uh, elevation of sculpture in a way that very few artists are able to do for me. So I, I really appreciated Linda's latest work at the Pace Gallery. Her first show, her first solo show with this Pace Gallery in New York City. Now Pace has a second location in Chelsea we go to now, which is a multi-floor building with a few different exhibitions on right now. Let's take a look. First, we go into Aggie, my girl Agnes Martin. You have to respect the game. Agnes Martin, one of the seminal abstract painters in American history. Abstract expressionism without Agnes Martin is like Google Suite without Google Sheets. You have to respect the grid. I stand back and I take in these paintings, as I always do with Agnes Martin, as I did with her retrospective at the Guggenheim a few years ago. I can just stand back and absorb these and let them wash over me. And the silence that comes along with them that's associated with these, they're not loud. They're very subdued and symmetrical and even. And I can sit with them for hours. 
Taking the elevator up a few more floors is the exhibition by Nina Kachadurian. I hope I am saying that name correctly. Nina's work is multidimensional. She spans all different disciplines. She is a conceptual artist and therefore she expands into whatever medium will fit the idea, whether it's 3D, 2D, video, audio, performance, you name it, she does it all. When you come in the gallery, there's an exhibition wall of genealogy of the supermarket, meaning it's the family tree of different faces of food brands that commonly are sold in the United States. She also has a series of photographs of different book spines, which are pretty interesting uh, as titles to explore. I enjoyed that. What I was most interested in was the accent elimination exhibition, that work of video that was Nina talking to her mother and her father, her mother being Finnish, her father being, I shouldn't say, she's not finished, she's still alive. She's from Finland, she's Finnish, just to be clear. Her father is Armenian and the two of them met years ago before they had Nina and fell in love, had Nina. Story goes on and on. Nina, as a young adult, noticed that there were advertisements in her community when she was young for accent elimination. And she was around a lot of Armenians in a United States context. And so uh, the advertisement was suggesting that as an immigrant, you could take classes to eliminate the accent from your English pronunciation, your English dialect. She thought this was interesting, had a conversation with her parents, and it's captured on this video. There's three TVs, Nina's in the center, father, mother, and Nina's having the conversation one at a time with each of them, asking about their background and their history. And she plays kind of uh, unknowing. She plays a little bit unwitting about the background of her parents for the viewer so that you can kind of unravel their story along with her paints the picture beautifully. It's this cheeky, fun way of showing that her parents' background of having multinational experiences, crossing borders for different reasons, be it to escape persecution or to pursue opportunities elsewhere, moving around Europe and then eventually coming to the United States, they picked up multiple languages. Both of her parents speak at least three languages, which is more than I can say and more than most United States citizens can say. So the overarching idea here that Nina is drawing in is that these people have a very rich background and history that is really beautiful and multidimensional and the accent is a reflection of the fact that they're so skilled in multiple languages, which kind of speaks to their worldliness, their openness, and their humanity. What were your parents doing? Armenians have been in what is now Turkey for over 2,500 years. This work was so good that in 2015 at the Venice Biennale, Nina won the Golden Lion Award for Best National Participation for this work, which was at the Armenian booth. What I like about this work is it's also really low tech. If you are an artist or an aspiring creative and you have a story to tell, it doesn't have to be very expensive. You don't need a lot of overhead. If you have something simple for recording video like your phone and you can set up the idea and record it, that's it. Going up yet another floor in the Pace Gallery, I told you it was tall, y'all. We find a play. This exhibition features three seminal artists. Uh, Kuschje von Bruggen, his partner Klaus Oldenburg, both of them are sculptors, and Frank Gehry, the famed architect. They were invited by a friend, a mutual friend, to Venice in 1984 to put on a play. You have Frank Gehry out there and Klaus Oldenburg in costume, acting silly, running around. It's worth a look if you're in the New York City area to go check it out. I do think it's pretty cool.
And then just to round things out, on our day at the Pace Galleries, we take ourselves up to the top floor, get some fresh air, take in the view and the surroundings of the New York City area, while we hang out with sculptures from my namesake artist, Alexander Calder, there on the rooftop mezzanine. And there you have it, a nice walk through the Pace Galleries on a fine May day. Thank you for coming along with me. Again, if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more videos like it, there's a subscribe button right down there. You can click that for more video alerts. You can also ding the bell if that's something you like. Give this video a thumbs up, it really helps people find the channel. And I look forward to bringing more videos to you in the coming days, weeks, months ahead. Take it easy, stay creative, I'll catch you next time.